the minority rule. The reason that those folks are against it is they have an ideology. And that ideology is supported by very wealthy people. And by the way, they say there's no money in the state. This is the seventh largest uh, economy in the world. There's lots of money in the state. Where is it? <laughs> well, yes. The top 1% has more assets than the bottom 95%. Shortly after the furlough statement released by the university, the university also decided to um, have pay increases for the some top university administrators, which I personally think is a lot of the base for not only the students, but staff, particularly uh, lecturers. Um, and the staff who were also uh, affected by the furloughs. So I just wanted to get the panel's take on sort of this oligarchy who seems to be unaffected by these, um, this economic situation that we're in. I mean, so the difference of opinion is it's like, you know, should, we excuse, should we expose the abuse, you know, and problems in the UC system? I think we have to work on both fronts. We have to get the money from the state, but we also have to get our own house in order. I'm afraid the state will come up with more money and we'll just use it for the wrong reasons. Um, we've had an incredible conversation at the top. We have a growing wealth inequality in the UC system. Money is going to the top. Um, right before last year, about the average pay increase for the people making over $300,000 was a 40% increase over a two-year period. There's an incredible concentration of wealth here, like in the nation and also at this university. And I think one way of trying to actually um, get more shared governance, get the faculty more involved, is to try to really control and limit what we call administrative flows. It's increased something like 235 percent in the last 15 years, while the number of faculty have almost like stayed the same. We get more and more administrators having higher and higher salaries, and less and less money to do what we're supposed to do. Third, I'm always trying to encourage you to talk to your peers We had a sit-in at the Anthem Library that the students and the librarians stayed there all night last week, got, you know, kept it open, and the chancellor and the provost got together with donors and they found money and they're keeping the library open. Long-term, get more money from the state. The chancellor told us himself he didn't expect that to happen for two or three years. So our question is, what's going to happen in the short term? He did not tell us what's going to happen next year. If they lay off all the lectures, if they turn graduate students into um, readers like they have started to do, we're talking about uh, less of we're losing like 2,000 classes next year. We're talking about a total inability to graduate people on time, a total inability of getting classes. Something has to be done now and it can be done locally. There is a large thing, but we have to put pressure on the chancellor and the people at this university, this campus, to fight these changes and to find better solutions because things could get really bad next year if we don't do something now.